easy just to do what comes natural. But he never let down his God. There is no one in all the world that I trust more than my husband. That is trustworthiness. In fact, she said, he's got a lot on business. But I would trust him even if he was the only man on an island with 500 other women. Mm -hmm. Now that, my friend, is trust and confidence. Mm -hmm. That is safety. Mm -hmm. That's one of the building blocks of spiritual intimacy. Then, a husband and a wife need to be completely honest with each other. Again, they should be able to express their deepest feelings with each other. And it must be done in love. Ephesians 4.15 says, speaking the truth in love. So both safety and honesty should be in a marriage. Then there is structured times with God. Spiritual intimacy between each other and God requires a structured time spent with God Himself. The man's that man, that means reading and studying God's Word, spending time in prayer, learning to praise the Lord with a thankful heart. Being faithful in the house of God. Listening to the message. Listening to the Sunday school lesson. Reading your Bible. Not only reading, but studying it and meditating upon it. And staying as close as you possibly can to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that He will meet you. And He will fill your cup with joy. In, ja, in uh, Jeremiah 29, 13, Jeremiah said, And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. James 4, 8 reminds us, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Acts 17, 27, That they should seek the Lord, though he be not far from every one of us. Very plain from the Word of God, we are to stay close to Christ. You must also remember that God is pursuing you as husband and wife. He wants spiritual intimacy in your marriage. He wants you to grow closer with each other day by day. Larry Crabb said this, God invites us to find Him. And then He lets us know that in the process of finding Him, we will also find ourselves. I think that is true. And then the final building block is prayer. You know, God has appointed the man of the house to be the priest in the house. That means that the husband, the father is the spiritual leader in his house. And his responsibility is to pray for his wife and his children. Prayer produces intimacy. You become intimate in a spiritual sense with the one to whom you pray and the one for whom you pray and the one with whom you pray. Husband and wife praying together. When Moses went up to Mount Sinai, it was called the place of prayer. And he stayed there long enough that God could speak to him as friend to friend. And he learned about prayer and being intimate with God in prayer. Why? Because prayer produces intimacy. Jesus, the Son of Man, became so intimate with the Father that while He was on earth and He went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, 
The Shekinah glory began to shine through the Lord Jesus Christ. On the day of Pentecost, the disciples were praying together. That prayer produced such intimacy that they were with one accord in one place. And the day of Pentecost occurred that has brought great blessing even to you and I. When a man prays with his wife, he becomes intimate with her. In true prayer, the spiritual intimacy developed is far greater than the physical intimacy. It is in spirit, a spiritual intimacy together. A woman praying for her husband develops an intimacy with him in spirit that draws her closer and closer to her husband. The failure of the man to pray for and with his wife means that he does not develop the intimacy that is needed, that intimacy in spirit that will produce true oneness. I think that spiritual intimacy helps bring us together as one. We have that fellowship, that relation, that walk with God. And that is spiritual intimacy. If you really want to be one with your husband, one with your wife, then pray with him and for him. Pray with her and for him. If you want a spiritual intimacy with your children, then pray for them and pray with them. Remember, God is a partner in your marriage. He is a member of your family. And when you have a partner and a member in the family, you should talk to that member. And that is prayer. There are also some barriers to spiritual intimacy. There are things that will prevent spiritual intimacy from taking place in our lives, in our marriages, and our families. Of course, sin will kill spiritual intimacy immediately. Therefore, sin needs to be it needs to be discovered, it needs to be pinpointed, it needs to be confessed, and it needs to be forsaken. There are other things that hinder spiritual intimacy. Selfishness and impatience, fleshly desires, criticisms, stress, satanic attack, negative uh, emotions such as fear and anger and, dis and discouragement and many, many others. All of these are enemies of spiritual intimacy. No matter what the, the barriers are that are keeping you from having an intimate walk with God, you need to discover them and get right with God immediately. Then I want to talk to you, last of all, about the blessings of spiritual intimacy. There are many, but I'm going to limit it to one. Marital and family joy and happiness. Now, both the scripture and studies made by scientists, scientists back up the fact that joy and happiness are found in families that serve the Lord. Let's look at some scripture. Psalm 28, 1 to 4. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shall thou be, and it, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of, thy, of thine house. Thy children like all in plants around thy table. Behold that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. Ecclesiastes 9.9 9, Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity. Galatians 5.22 and 23 but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, or self-control. Against such there is no law. These are only three of the many promises that God gives for marital happiness and joy if we have spiritual intimacy with God. 
But scientific studies have also proven this. Several scientific studies have pointed it out. Dr. Paul Ammons and Dr. Nick Stinnett uh, studied what types of people have the best family relationships and the happiest marriages. And they concluded that a common trait found in these relationships was that they were deeply spiritual people. Spiritual people who walked with God had better family and marital relationships. Two professors at the Virginia State University interviewed couples who had been married for 15 years or more to discover what they felt were the most important factors in their marriages and their families. These couple, couples all ranked religion as being among the top reasons for having a happy marriage. Dr. Robert Taylor, a family medicine specialist, said couples who are actively religious tend to have more stable marriages. A husband and a wife grow closer to Jesus Christ and in the process they become closer to each other. I want to show you a triangle. Pastor mentioned it a while ago. And we have a triangle, please. Now you see, God is at the top, and hubby is over to one side, and wife is to the other. And there are stair steps that go up. You will not notice that the closer you get to the Lord, the closer you get to each other. But the opposite is also true. The further you get away from God, the further you get away from each other. So you, you should follow up on the heels of Jesus. I read in a family devotion in Daily Bread not long ago. This missionary couple had come back to the States and they were reporting to their churches. And the lady told about her ministry with one of the women that she had won to Christ. And they were studying Matthew 4.19. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And that lady began to explain to the missionary what the word follow meant in her own language. And she said, it's like two slippers. And she, she held up, two, the missionary did, two slippers that the woman had actually worn. And she held them like this, one here and one here. And emphasized uh, that they were far apart. But the woman told her, said, the word follow means that you, you follow one right after the other. One on the heels of the other. And spiritually, that is our responsibility, following upon the heels of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you a true story. A story about a born-again marriage. Betty grew up in a Christian home. Bill became a believer in a Bible-believing church when he was 13. The two of them met at youth meetings, and they were married when he was 18 and she was 16. Bill became a very successful businessman over the years. Betty developed into an extremely popular, vivacious young woman, an active wife and mother, with two boys. They were the model family involved in affairs in the community and in business and in the church. In fact, this couple was looked upon as an exemplary leaders and as a pattern for other couples. But 15 years into the marriage, Bill and Betty were locked in a cold war with each other. Before that, Bill had heard a series of messages given by a pastor on the qualities of Christ's likeness. And it really, really struck home to him and he really saw the need of having these qualities in his life. And they were to a certain extent 
and in Betty's life as well. But at home and in the marriage, things just kept getting worse all the time. She fiercely accused him once, telling him that she what he really what she thought he really was like. And they had a long and heated argument. And Bill burst out of the door and walked out and got into the car and clenched his fist around the steering wheel and bit his head. He knew that what was happening was wrong. And yet he didn't know what to do about it. He cried out to God, God, you have to do something. I can't go on with this any longer. I've got to have a change. Now, Bill was not a man that shed tears easily. But at that time, his body was racked with sobs. And he cried out, Jesus, you are my Savior. Help me. After he had composed himself somewhat and settled down, he started the car and he drove away. Driving block after block after block, thinking, thinking, thinking. And suddenly he began to think about those Christ-like qualities that he'd sincerely been trying to develop in his own life. And the more he thought about it, the more he realized something. And when he realized it, he immediately turned the car around and headed home just as quickly as he possibly could. When he got home, he took Betty gently by the elbow, led her upstairs to the bedroom. And he said to her, Do you remember when you were saved? And she said, Why, yes. It was wonderful. Do you remember what Jesus did in your life after you were saved? Yes, I remember what the Lord Jesus did. Then Bill said, you know, when we were married, we had a wedding ceremony. But that was it. We have never had family devotions. We have never really prayed together as a couple except maybe in church. And we have never shared the Word of God together and studied it together to learn what God wants us to do. Our boys have never seen us talk to God except at mealtime when we have a short prayer. By this time, Betty was quietly, intensely weeping. First, because of the tenderness of his voice, Second, because of the truth of what he said. And then he said, do you know what our, do you know what our marriage lacks? He said, our marriage needs to be born again. A born again marriage. As the fountain spring gushing forth fresh sparkling water, they began to talk to each other sharing their most intimate feelings and thoughts. Bill opened up himself to her, exposing his thoughts, pouring out his heart, asking forgiveness for the many wrongs that he had committed. Betty shared with him her thoughts, her longings, her desires, her needs. They gave and received from each other forgiveness. In the early hours of the morning, they knelt by the bedside and they called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to change their marriage. Together they asked God to make their marriage new, to give it life, to give it the qualities of Christ's likeness. God answered that prayer and gave them a brand new marriage. It was a kind of life a new kind of reality for their marriage and their life. And their home was permanently changed because they invited Jesus Christ into their home to have spiritual intimacy with Him. Does your marriage reflect the qualities 
of Christ likeness. Have you committed your marriage and your home to Jesus Christ? You know, folks, you cannot have a Christian marriage without being a Christian at heart. And the only way you can be a Christian is to turn from your sin and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. There just might be someone here that's not saved. And if that's the case, then you have to turn your heart to Jesus Christ. But to those of us that are saved and married, we need to have spiritual intimacy with our God. Husband and wife and God. Walking together. And the Bible says a threefold form is not easily I'm not going to give you an invitation tonight. Brother Nobley can do as the Lord leads him. But this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Tonight, or maybe tomorrow, you've had a long trip coming in. I know you're tired. Maybe tomorrow would be a good time. I would like to, to ask every husband and every wife to just spend a few minutes together. Go somewhere by yourself and just make your marriage a born again marriage. If you've never done so. Many of you have committed your marriage to Christ already. Thank God for that. This would be a good time to just renew that commitment. Just take a few moments together. Ask Jesus Christ to develop the qualities of Christ likeness in your marriage. Make it a spiritual, intimate affair with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these truths. And I pray that we'll apply them to our heart. And they will make a permanent difference in our heart and our life. We thank you for everyone here, their willingness to come. For those that are perhaps still on their way, be coming tomorrow. May the Spirit and the power of the Lord have His way in every service this week. In Jesus' name.